Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Blender Developer Sneak Peek. My name is Thomas Beck and I'm very happy that you're with me here again. What is Blender given us in this episode? The first thing is we got a whole new bunch of new icons for Blender, new icons for texture painting, new easing icons and a new action editor icon that I'll show you. We got the possibility to drag widgets now. We have a new cycles node, the transparent depth node. We can now split normals. That's uh, especially important for game props, uh, game prop artists. We have uh, the a, new, a completely new feature. We can bake with cycles and we have the possibility to texture uh, freestyle strokes and there is a lot to cover like you see so let's start let's look now to the icons we got new interpolation icons designed by paolo thanks paolo that was great work um, that is symbolizing every easing or every dynamic effect with a very clear icon i think and we got new modes there too when you have the um, active keyframe here and you got uh, easing let's look at quintic an easing quintic type interpolation type then you immediately not notice that we get an automatic easing here and automatic easing is doing the following when you get an eff effect uh, selected that is on a transitional type, so like sinusoidal, sinusoidal until circular, then it's automatically choosing the easing in type, this type here. Because most of the time when you choose one of those effects, you'd like to have it ease in. But when you like, uh, when you selected a effect like back, bounce or elastic, like this one, then it's easing out. And that's most of the time exactly what you want in those effects. So when you have automatic easing set here, then it's ease out on effects and ease in on transitional types. These are awaiting us on the uh, painting modes. So let's switch to the 3D view and to the texture paint. And then you can see here the new icons, the texture draw, the soften, smear, draw clone and brush icon those are in master the google summer of code paint uh, painting editions are not yet they are planned for 2.72 but that is already very cool because the old icons let's face it were not that great and that brings us to the last icons and those are in the um, in the action editor so let's switch to that the action editor and it is this one you all know the uh, snowflake icon i think <clears throat> and this one is exactly the same just click on it and you got a new nla track here the next feature is very easy to describe but also very helpful when you have um when you have done any action in Blender, like moving a cube from one location to the other, then you always have this um, last operator panel here. But as you just saw, in my setup, it's most of the time hidden. And I'm using always the F6 button for this. And when I got my mouse at this point and press F6, then this pop-up will show up, but it's, it will show up right over the the uh, object that I'd like to alter, like uh, with, with this values. So now we got the possibility to drag and drop this window, and that was never possible before. I think that was possible before in the 2.4 uh, series, but now it was not, and uh, but but until now it was not, but now it is. So that is this feature. And now let's look at the new cycles node transparent depth. To show you the next feature, I prepared a simple scene with three planes like this. And all planes got the same material applied, this transparent depth material that you see here. And 
um, what I uh, this, the feature I'd like to show you is now the transparent death feature that is uh, included in the light path node. So just hit input and uh, light path, and then you got this transparent death node. And when you fed this transparent death node into the factor value, I muted this because I'd like to show you later what is possible with this subtract node. But when you fed this directly into the mix shader, then this mix shader will decide if this value is zero and then take this transparent BSDF shader, or if it's one and then take this diffuse BSDF shader. And what the transparent death is now doing, it's counting how often a ray is passing through a, a transparent surface. So let's look at this in action. This here are our three planes that are visible because I altered this value to not be in the center. In the center would be uh, invisible, but um, a bit off the center. So you're seeing those th uh, three planes here. But when I uh, look at the planes when the, uh, the light pass, the, the light ray is not only passing one time, like in this complete area, but passing two times through these surfaces, then you'll see that this patch that is um, that is passed two times is taking this diffuse shader, and I can um, I can do this via rot rotating the view. So it's doing like something like this. And when you are now activating the subtract node again, then you could easily um, you could easily operate on not only one pass but on two passes. So you could say when it's passing one time through this surface, then it's still transparent, but when you got three uh, surfaces that this ray has to pass, then I'd like to have this other value, this, this other shader. And so let's unmute this and then you see, okay, it's passing two times here, but that's not, not a problem. And it's passing two time, uh, one, ti one time here, and one time here, and that is no problem. But when you ha have a shader uh, ray that is passing three times like this, then you got this second shader. And that is especially useful for things like trees, where you got many pl um, many planes that are symbolizing those the leaves, and you'd like to have control over when this shader is um, going to black or going to green or some some other color that you like uh, or that fits your your tree. The next thing I, I'm going to show you is for game development people interesting and that is, uh, let me just smooth it, that is uh, to make some edges from your mesh sharp. And to do that you have to select some edges here, switch to the shading UV panel here and then uh, mark those edges as sharp. And when you look at them now then you see nothing happened. And that was driving me nuts before I uh, noticed that I didn't activate auto smooth here. So you should activate it auto smooth on and then you could easily select all those edges you'd like to have sharp and then they are. And they are preserved in the renderer too. So they, got expo they are exported if you'd like to have those things in another game engine or whatever. So that is very helpful and that is Bastion's work. So thanks for this. That will help us game development artists. Now let's come to the cycles baking feature. This feature is uh, equally important for game developers and game artists because they uh, enable you to um, bake your textures onto your characters and use them in several different game engines. So with cycles, it wasn't possible before and with Blender internal it was, but now with the two, uh, version 2.71, it is and the workflow is as following. Um, 
I already um, added uh, Plane and uh, Suzanne model here and both have a material. Suzanne has a green material and the floor has a blue material and when I render that then it's looking like this. And when we are now when we'd like to to bake now then we need some textures to bake to and the first texture is the floor texture this one and I need to unwrap that via unwrap and then you see the unwrapping is uh, taking place here and then I'd like to um, unwrap Suzanne too so select the Suzanne text unwrap with smart UV protect project and unwrap it here so that's important for making it work the next thing is you have to change to your baking panel that is located in the render uh, tab here but uh, you have to insert a new node too and this node is the image texture node and this image texture node needs to um, link needs to link to the Suzanne texture and the floor texture so insert an image texture and the floor texture and when you like to bake now then you have to select this image texture and then click on bake and then you'll see when you have the right texture selected that it's baking all you'll all the uh, textures and all materials to this image and the same is true for uh, Suzanne just select Suzanne then the image texture and bake and then you'll see when you choose the right texture that it's uh, baked to th that has baked to this image and uh, to select which passes you like to bake you choose combined ambient occlusion and uh, all those values in this checkbox in this combo box but I think that we'll change this to the to another um, select selection scheme like uh, checkboxes or what else and when you have this clear um, this clear checkbox selected then it will clear the image before baking so when I bake again then it cleared when I didn't uh, select this option then it would just override it without clearing it. Marching is uh, making those baked textures a bit uh, wider so you got no visible seams there. Selected to active is especially important when you got a high poly mesh and you like to break that to a low poly mesh so you would first uh, select the, um, the high poly mesh then the low poly mesh and then click bake to and cage is uh, is uh, needed when you have a, a cage object uh, what a cage object is would be too far uh, too much to explain but you can um, read that up in the poly count wiki that I'll link in the video description so I'd just like to show you this um, and now we are looking at how we would assign this material and that is very easy just click on the image texture connect that those two and then connect those two and you'll have this ready to use in any game engine that you like just export it and use it I hope that it's already useful for you but I'm sure that we'll change the workflow a bit when it comes to uh, bigger scenes with more textures and uh, more stuff to bake then I think this current workflow with selecting the image texture clicking on bake saving the image uh, is not that optimal and so I think we'll change that but I just wanted to show you what is in already and when we change that I'll uh, notice you uh, for sure so use it already and have fun with it I think it's already awesome let's now come to the freestyle feature freestyle is a, a post-processing library that is drawing strokes around your objects it's in blender since ever i think since one year or so 
So that's nothing new, but Freestyle got new options that are really cool. And uh, that is, first of all, this uh, sorting option. With this sorting option, you can sort which ed edges are drawn first and which are drawn last. That is important if you got several objects that are overlapping and you want to uh, sort the edges. And uh, apart from that, it got a new texture option. And with this texture, texture option, you can use textures as strokes. And that's, uh, that's option I'd like to show to you now. So first of all, you have to click use textures here. Then we are going to the line style texture properties with a click on this button. And then we'll just um, add a new texture. And this texture is uh, capable of using all the textures that are available in the Blender internal renderer. So let's choose image or movie here and open a texture that is um, on one of the demo files. I think, what was it? Downloads, then textures, then floral brush. And with this texture, uh, you can uh, you can use this texture to draw um, the strokes and this part of the texture this lower part is used if you are enabling use tips here so we're enabling that and we're saying okay this should be our alpha texture so white is vi is uh, visible and black is uh, hidden then we activate use alpha and calculate alpha. So apart from that we are multiplying those values with the um, with the strokes so all whites are uh, visible and then we we'll say RGB to intensity and that should be enough to make strokes. So let's see. So that is not that visible because you're seeing that this line is very thin but if we are increasing this lines this uh, line thickness by well, let's say 50 or 70 70 then you see okay now we got a stroke that is not looking good but it's a stroke and uh, so let's look at what is the problem here First of all, the texture has an option that ha that's called spacing along strokes. And uh, sp the spacing has to be one or, f or two or th three in this case, because this texture, this texture here, is uh, very dense. And so, you w so we should uh, stretch it along the stroke a bit. So that's the first thing. And then you can see that it's immediately working. We got nice little lines around the uh, around the cube, and those are textured by the stroke. And when we are now using a color modifier, for example, this along stroke, let's take a bluish color here and a greenish color there, and for example, a pink color there then you'll see that you got really cool effects that you are now able to produce with Freestyle. With almost 20 minutes of sneak peeks and features, I'd like to conclude this episode now. I hope to see you on Facebook, Twitter, Vimeo and Google+. I hope to see you there. Keep on blending and we'll see us next time. Bye!